Why are bagels boiled? Boiling a bagel is what gives it its characteristic texture. Skipping the boiling step makes it a regular bread that just happens to be shaped like a bagel. Boiling gives it its chew and it ensures there's no crispy crust. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. My name is Barbara and for over a decade I've been teaching viewers and subscribers how to cook authentic dishes from my home country of Belize and many other delicious dishes from basic ingredients. I have two cups of bread flour in the bowl and to this I've added a tablespoon of active dry yeast and a tablespoon of sugar and I'm adding two cups of warm water and I'm using the spurtle myrtle from my friend Cindy. Thank you so much Cindy. Now I'm making this starter. Let me add another ounce of water. So it's two cups plus one ounce, okay? Sometimes you need a little bit extra to just loosen it up. So let me get the bowl cleaned off here. Put everything in the middle. And then cover this up with some shrink wrap or stretch film for one hour. One hour later, take a look at what it looks like. It's stretchy and elasticy. All right, so now I have another two and a half cups of bread flour over here because the total allotment is for five cups, but we have to split it like this. Now to this, I've added a teaspoon of salt, and then I'm just gonna merge the dry ingredients into the starter and stir very carefully so that we don't make a big mess. All right, so for some people that don't like to put their hand in dough, you might use this stick the whole time, but this gets annoying for me so I like to get rid of the stick and just get my clean dry hands into the mixture. I have to feel it. See, it's super sticky. So I know that I don't need any more liquid. I just have to stay here and patiently work this all together. And I always turn the dough in the bowl in a rotation like this to make it act like if I'm using a dough hook on the stand mixer. So I've washed and cleaned off my hands and I'm just kneading the dough for as long as it takes to make a smooth dough ball, okay? You're gonna feel it get smoother and smoother in your hands. We all love to eat out, but unfortunately for some of us, it's not the healthiest option. How would you like to make better than restaurant quality meals at home? With my second cookbook, The Pantry Laid Bare, you can make Chinese food without all that added MSG. Breads and bagels are a cinch because no appliances are needed. Pizza. It's not delivery, it's the stovetop. With three ingredients plus warm water, make a thick batter, spread in a cast iron skillet, then add sauce and toppings of your choice, cook five minutes uncovered, cover, cook 10 more minutes, then serve. These 111 recipes will bring out the inner chef in you. Get a copy today only at www.bearpantryshow.com. Shop safely and securely at www.bearpantryshow.com. So make it into a ball, put it back into the bowl, cover it up with a stretch film for another hour. Now, I really should have put some oil on the film because look, the dough is stuck to it, but you know what? We can peel it off. It just takes a little bit of time, but we can peel it off. So then just re-knead. If you have a bench a scraper, you can use that. If not, just throw some flour down on the countertop and just start working the dough ball around until you can feel it smooth again and you're gonna hear a lot of air release out of the dough, okay? Now, if you are not used to handling dough, don't get frustrated. Just work with it patiently because it took me a lot of years to get this good at working with dough. It didn't happen overnight, all right? So now I'm just kind of trying to form it into a big dough ball again, a smooth dough ball. So let me go ahead and press it out slightly because we're gonna use our fractions. You know, when you're in school and you go, when am I ever gonna use this math? Well, you're gonna need it for cooking. That's what you need fractions for. So I'm gonna cut this in half first with a big knife. If not, use a bench scraper. And then I'm gonna cut one and a half in half. So now we're making quarters. And then cut it again so we're making eighths. So we're gonna get eight big pieces, as even as we can go. So now grab, I'm counting eight, two, four, six, eight. Grab one piece, get some flour on your counter, and then first start forming a dome, and then fold the ends together, pinch it shut, and then you could either roll it on the countertop or roll it in between your hands like this. See, both ways. 
Now I found that when it comes to the bagels, you should roll it with a rolling pin because no matter how much you flatten it with your hand, um, the bagel will get too thick. So roll it with the rolling pin and then grab a cookie cutter, a big one. Um, I think this one is like two inches wide. I'm gonna measure it and tell you guys if I'm wrong or right. See, big. Kinda reminds me of when those people are stretching their ears. So punch the holes out and set the pieces aside, okay? Now grab the holes, four pieces, and form it into a ball again. Mash it out with the rolling pin, and then use the same cookie cutter to punch a hole in. So this is a smaller bagel, and then do the same thing with the other one. And then now I've put the two pieces together, the two last holes, and I'm making a little baby one, and then I just tear it in the middle to make the hole because we can't keep punching and punching and punching, right? So now I have my big skillet, I'm adding water, and once this starts boiling, I'm just gonna hit it with some salt. This is the Everything Bagel seasoning that Bella sent. Thank you so much, Bella Jada is so grateful for that. So now we're boiling the bagel, and like I said in the beginning, this is what makes it a bagel. If not, it's just gonna be a bread. Put some egg wash. If you don't wanna do the egg wash, you can skip this part, but then if you're putting a topping, the stuff might not stick. Keep that in mind, okay? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and dunk it over this way. But I'm not getting a whole lot on the bagel, so once I pick it up, I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle the stuff on because the thing that Bella sent here has a, a, a lid in the top part where you can sprinkle, see? It has little holes. And I'm gonna do a bunch like this, but I'm also gonna do some with Parmesan cheese and one with sesame seed just to make it look you know different have an assortment so bake it at 400 for 30 minutes and then this is how it looks mm -hmm. dive in remember guys we are not buying this book pick up a copy of this book instead beans and rice volume 2 is the only belizean cookbook backed by the bear pantry show Take a look at all these wonderful recipes you'll find inside the pages. Not interested in Belizean dishes? Then the pantry laid bare with these better than restaurant quality comfort foods might be the perfect book for you. Only need a small batch or a meal for two? Then pick up a copy of No More Leftovers. Each book has many choices of delicious dishes from basic ingredients.